What's up everyone, Praxis Visuals here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make these sparks. Yeah, let's get into it. Okay guys, so I kind of lied, this isn't quite a tutorial, it's more of a run through. Um, this is going to be just kind of like going piece by piece and what I did. I'm not starting from scratch. I'm going to show you just the steps that I did and uh, to create that very realistic effect. I think it's realistic. It's actually not bad, I think. Um, so one cool thing about this, though, is you can make basically all of it in After Effects. There is one little plug-in, but guess what? It's free. Um, it is Video Copilot's uh, Color Vibrance. It's a very, very, very useful plug-in for After Effects if you do not have it yet. Um, since it is free, I would just say get it because it's very useful to make uh, really nice, vibrant colors, hence the name, Color Vibrance. Um, so yeah. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and create a solid white. And then what you're going to want to do is add a uh, the effect CC Particle World. Uh, do not use uh, CC Particle Systems 2. Now this is a good effect, and Particle World's Probably it is better, but uh, here's look at this comparison here. Uh, as you can see, you know, obviously there is no floor with CC particle systems, and the floor can get make it a very realistic effect. So using Particle World just has that much more realism. You can actually integrate sparks into your scene, uh, so that just makes it a much better effect to use rather than CC particle systems too. So go ahead and, and go ahead and get. Uh, Particle, uh, particle world into your solid, the first thing you want to do. And then you're going to want to add a... Uh, oh, by the way, the reason why this is here, a little sign there. Make sure that you're running in 32 bits per channel. Uh, just adds that extra umph, extra umph to the uh, color and glow when you're adding stuff like that. Uh, next thing you're going to want to do is... I'm going to go ahead and skip these two for real quick. Uh, go to your particle you're going to start off on line. Do not use line. You might think, oh, sparks are lines, but they're actually, technically, if you slow them down, they are faded spheres, and you just see them as lines because they are, you know, it's motion blur, and we'll get to that in a second. So, um, first thing you're going to want to do is go to your birth rate, and as you can see, you can use the numbers I use unless you're just kind of following through to watch. Um, Birth rate is basically how much particles you're going to add. So if you want overkill there and you had a crap load of like you're just have a whole bunch of sugar or salt, whatever you're doing here, and you can do that. And you could, it looks still really cool. Um, but uh, that's overkill and we're not going to do that. So I kept around 1.1. I thought was a good uh, medium for, uh, you know, a lot and a little. So especially for sparks. By the way, sparks was I'm going off of here. It's not... Uh, you know, a crap ton is actually more just like a, a welding spark, you know, something that's very standard. Um, you could just go off of what I'm doing to get the colors and stuff right, but I'm just doing a welding spark if you want to follow with that. Uh, longativity, that's basically, or longevity, however you want to pronounce that, is basically how long it's uh, living. So if I turn this really up, it's going to stick to the scene for a while. So you can all these little particles that kind of stick there for a moment. Um, they kind of just, you know, they're chilling. Uh, but for sparks, they kind of, they go out, they bounce once or twice, and then they just die. That's how, you know, in real life it kind of works. Uh, if not even shorter than that. So, those are the two parts I thought were, you know, uh, probably realistic. Uh, I kept the grid position to a floor, not the producer world. Uh, this, this is all stuff you don't really need to know. This is all just, you know, aesthetics and what you want to look at. For the floor, you can see all the lines and the grid. Uh, producer, we're going to move on. Producer is it's really whatever you want to do. Um, if you're, you know, if you need the sparks to be over, off to the right, in the middle, wherever, you can do that. Um, if you were to, this is a cool effect though here, if you went and got your Y position here, and you went up, you can kind of see that these little other ones, they bounce much higher. They hit, they're starting way up here, and they just fall and go have a higher bounce, which is really cool. Very uh, realistic there. I like, like what they did with that. 
Um, radius, I kept to zero since it's a welding spark. It's very, it's uh, producer radius is very low. Uh, if you were doing a uh, <clears throat> a wide spark, you would uh, get the x-axis, not y. You get that and kind of spread it out. See, you have all these little, it's a little waterfall of spark. It's a spark fall, but it's, it's a welding spark, so I'm going to keep that zero. Um, so this is all just up to you where you want to place stuff. If you're doing a welding spark, exactly like I am, just have it zero. Uh, next thing you want to do is your physics. Um, usually I kept to explosive. It's just basically popping out of the uh, producer and falling. That's explosive. And if you're doing direction axis, that's basically telling it, hey, go this direction, move over this way, go that way, whatever. And if you were to hit that one, you would go down direction axis and you could tweak all that down here. But it's blacked out and we're not using it. So uh, moving on, your velocity is basically like uh, how much of a cone shape it'll do. And I thought this was probably the good medium of the, whoops, the uh, two, like having a, a really umbrella-like, oh wait, hold on, that's gravity. See, if you were to do that, it have much more of a, it pop out more. But for welding sparks, I think it just have like a very, you know, very, you know, whatever. I'm just kind of fallen. It's not like, ooh, going off to the right and left, going at you with the Z-space and all that. So, moving on. Gra inherent velocity is zero. Gravity is basically its speed, because if you turn the gravity way up, that's saying, hey, gravity is super strong, and it's going to pull it down a lot faster. And doing that will also make these live a little longer, since our birth rate is at, our longevity is at this right here. But uh, I think, if anything, this particular shot here, they're moving a little too fast. But, I mean, it, it doesn't bother me too much. But, uh kept gravity around that for gravity, like realism of what sparks would do when they would drop to the ground. Um, so that is about for the gravity and velocity and all that extra and extra angle I don't really need to worry about since we're working in explosive. Uh, floor position, this is just where you want the floor to be. If you want it to be a little higher, just depending on your scene and where your camera angle's at, like if it was close to the ground, of course you would want it to be a little bit closer. So you could actually have the realism where the sparks are hitting but uh, I just kind of kept it right there uh, particle visibility have all so they all hit the ground and they would still be there I guess I'm not really sure normal and bounce bounce of course actually you know is what makes it bounce and have realism if you had none it would just continue to fall just like particle systems would um, that's another thing with particle systems, though, is you can't do anything with the z-axis. There is no z-axis to work with. It's all x and y, which sucks, actually. Uh, but, like I said, this is better to use, and this uh, particle systems is not quite the uh, choice effect to use. So, back to bounce. We're going to have it right there. Bouncing this is just how much it's going to bounce. Like, if you want to go really high, that really doesn't make any sense, but if you wanted to... It would drop and then bounce really high like a bouncy ball almost. But for sparks, we're not going to bounce too much. Bounce randomness is, you know, one's going to bounce really high, one's going to bounce kind of low. It's, you know, random realism. Yeah. Bounce spread is just basically how much it's going to spread out when it hits the ground. Um, you could do that right there, I guess. Well, no, nah, not really. It spreads a little too much, but I think 10 would be the perfect, you know, it's not... Hitting the ground and going straight back up. It's not going all the way out here, left or right. It's E space. It's, you know, about good medium. Um, like I said, direction axis is not going to be used. So moving on from that, gravity vector and touch and particle. So make sure you're using a faded sphere. Texture is not needed since we're using a faded sphere, not anything else. Birth size, death size, you want to keep pretty close together. You don't want to have... Uh, like, you don't want the birth size to be huge and the death size to be really small. That's not quite how particle uh, uh, sparks work. They're usually the same size all the way through. And But since, you know, realism we want to do is they, even though they're kind of the same size, but they kind of get smaller, but not a lot smaller. There's not a big, uh, you know, difference there. So I just thought 0 0.03 was the best and 0 0.02 was the birth size and death size. Uh, opacity I kept around 75%, 
You could crank that up if you wanted to, but I just count that at 75. Another thing about particle systems is that they do not have an opacity map, which is this right here. And this is kind of cool because I can say, hey, I want it to, as it's living, as time goes on, I want it to die and then come back and die and come back and die. So I kind of kept it as a little hills because sometimes spark would kind of fade as it's living, but slowly die out as it's fading in and out, you know. So earth color is going to be white because the core of a spark is not red, it's not orange, it's white. And um, death color, it's not quite white, it kind of faded a little a little off, it went to a, more of a yellowish skin tone almost. Kind of gross skin tone if you got that though, I guess. I don't really know. Um, uh, transfer mode, I kept a screen, so if you wanted to add any other uh, parts to it, you could. So that is it for Particle World, and we have these little particle simulation here. It's actually really cool by itself. Looks like little, uh, just particles, or little, uh, you know, sugar, salt, pepper, whatever you want to say. It's little, little dots. are kind of fun to watch and uh, create whatever, if you will. Um, next thing we're going to do for sparks, though, is we're going to add a glow. This kind of makes them stand out a little bit more. So, uh, and actually has a has little fade to it. You can see it a little more faded. There we go. So if I turn this off, I'll show you what I did. To be honest, I was kind of just dinking around with the radius and threshold to get the right amount. I didn't, you know, I think these two would be about good uh, numbers for this particular scene here since it's kind of further away I kept the radius a little bit smaller but if I mean if the sparks were up close you'd of course want to have the radius a little bit higher because the sparks are closer glow is you know closer uh, intensity kept at one didn't use A and B colors used the original colors um, now you're saying well it doesn't look like sparks well duh um, add uh, color vibrance and this is where it kind of gets a little closer to it there's a you know has that color very beautiful actually um, I did like a light pink here, kept it down here, kind of more of a whitish pinkish color. Vibrance I kicked up to two, so it gives it that nice umph, like if I put it at one, you would see, come on. Well, it's not going to be nice. There we go. See, it doesn't quite, you know, it's it's closely related to this, but kicking it will kind of make it say, hey, I want to be even more red and uh, it would kick it up a little bit. Preserved luminance, this is basically how much white is going to be in your particle if I push this up it of course would kind of take over and put more of this certain color into the whiteness and you don't really want that because like I said the particles themselves are white. So moving on we have uh, brightness. I, brightness is up to you like I said if it feels closer you probably want it to be a little brighter uh, but I kind of kept it as 150-ish. Uh, Same thing for gamma. Make sure that you turn up your fill empty background, I think it is. It just actually makes an effect on there. You know, you can kind of see it barely has an effect when it's just like that. So make sure you check that. Uh, kept matte alpha off and uh, yeah. Moving on. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn this on. I'll show you. So as you're seeing, oh, these are these are spots or little balls, whatever. Um, well, cool thing is turn on uh, motion blur there, check that, and you go to the layer and you check that as well. And ta-da! Cool sparks. Render that, render that through. Yeah, look at that. Very pretty. So, um, that's when I'll turn on, like I'll, when I looked at this, I thought, okay, this could work, I guess. But problem was, is that you need to add some turbulent displace to make it a little wiggle when it uh, is living. Like here, see if I can find a frame where... There we go, like this one. Bam. Because when there's sparks, of course, there's heat. And when there's heat, there's distortion. So, I had a little distortion there. Kept it turbulent. Kept the size and the amount pretty darn low because distortion, especially for sparks, are going to be pretty low for it. Unless it was complete fire, then, of course, you'd want that to be a little bit higher. Not too much, though. Uh, just make sure that you got the evolution from 0 to 15 about, I put 7 different evolutions there of complete 360s um, so yeah, that's about it that's all I basically touched 
for that. And that is, you could stop right there. I mean, that's not a bad uh, place to stop. It's very beautiful. Uh, it has a lot of realism to it. But let's just say that you were, I don't know why this came to mind, but if you were having a uh, scene in a shopping center and someone was welding, I don't know why they'd be welding in a shopping center, but you need reflection on the floor. So, moving on. Uh, let's go ahead and check this because this is the original right here. Um, you would have to have reflection, and technically this is actually Video Copilot's idea, but if you haven't watched it yet, I'll go and just run it through. This is a, with their lightning tutorial, how to make a specular uh, glow on the ground. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me go ahead and uncheck all this so I can run through it. There we go. Same thing goes for this. Sorry, didn't get these. Okay, so if I go ahead and what you're going to want to do is turn that to screen and you want to duplicate it and make sure that uh, you name it specular. And then next thing you're going to want to do is add a linear wipe. Mate, oh, whoops. Might help if I were to turn that on. Linear wipe is basically saying, hey, you're uh, I kind of like this little section down here. And I just want to cut it off to that. And as you can kind of see, very faintly, you can see a little line I'm moving across. And if I go 100%, it go all the way over to the bottom. If I go 0% of transition completion, it would be 0, and it would just be a duplicated layer. But uh, going about, what was it, right around there, I think it was, 70? Oh, wow, it's 35. Um, so I have 35, so it's about, um, where was it? So yeah, about stopped right there, as you can kind of see. <clears throat> Uh, next thing moving on is you're going to add a fast blur. And uh, for the fast blur, you're going to want to have a horizontal, so it's kind of stretching out this way. And um, add that to about six, not too strong. Add another fast blur, and this time do vertical down here. And then you're going to want to do a more stronger, so it actually reflects more downward and upward. Um, so we have those. Moving on, we have a solid composite. Now this is the part of the tutorial they did. And to be completely honest, I think I understood what he was saying and how it preserves color and the amount of light. But for my case, it doesn't make a difference. So, I mean, you could skip that step, I guess. Um, moving on, you have exposure. This is, when you have the blurs, it kind of, you know, tones down those uh, light, that light. So just pick, basically kicking that light back up to where it needs to be. And uh, putting around that, putting it around like a 3.7. Uh, to actually kick the light back up when you're uh, fading it out. Moving on, we have another linear wipe because you can kind of see it's just a big blur and it's all stretched. So adding just like this where you can cut it off to a certain length, uh, turn that on, and we're limiting it to the ground, right where it hits the floor. Uh, put this around 77, so it comes all the way down to about 77%, which is right around there, I believe and then uh, adding a lot of feather so that it would actually have a glow around it. Like, if I see what happens if I hit zero. See, technically it's like right around there. When you add that uh, feather to it, it's basically saying, yeah, I like it here, but have a little feather around these little particles like this one. You can kind of still see that there's a uh, little glow around it. So uh, put that up to about 100. Uh, moving on to uh, the next part here. Now you could stop there. Again, you could stop there and it looks good. That's if the floor was squeaky clean. Because, you know, it's very, very smooth. Very smooth uh, blurs there. We don't quite want that for realism unless it was legit a very squeaky floor. Uh, then you could stop there. Um, but, next thing you want to do is I go on Google or something like that and go on to a sidewalk texture is what I did. Um, and just want to get just like a normal texture of a uh, sidewalk. And uh, go on, put this under your specular. And then you're going to want to put, here, I'll turn this on. I'll zoom in for you so it can really pick up those details. But uh, once we turn this on, you can kind of see that there is these little, uh, little etchings in there. And that's just to uh, say, that there is a floor and it makes it look like there is a floor actually there. 
And what you're going to want to do is you want to check this to put to a 3D object so you can uh, rotate it in 3D space um, so that you're not stretching it or distorting the actual image. So I kind of replicated the floor and how everything was and I rotated it as such. So once we put that into 3D um, space, we kind of twist it to the floor's likings, um, adding a brightness contrast just to kick those colors a little bit and to bump up that uh, the specular parts in there. Uh, just exposure, I kind of added some offset and exposure parts and really kicked up the contrast. So that's about it, or is it? Um, you could stop there again, but to add more realism, we're going to add, we're going to basically duplicate these two layers, as you can see right here. Add another one, and then add, uh, basically all you're going to do is go into uh, your fast blurs here, and basically kick those a little bit more so it actually has more of a uh, area type blur. See, I'll show you. You see around it actually blurs out a lot more, and that's, you know, it's just adds because if there's a glow here, of course, yeah, you would see it reflect inside the ground, but of course it'd have a glow more out around it. So kept that I kicked these two up a good bit. Here I'll show you those numbers again. Use these two. And then for the linear wipe, I think I changed something. No, maybe not. Nope. So linear wipes stay the same. The only thing that changes is fast box blurs. Uh, next thing, we'll be adding again this duplicated uh, mat here, I guess you could say, I guess. Um, so if I turn this on, it'll mat the ground again. Here, I'll show you. Look right around there, and you'll see. So it just adds that extra texture to it, like a ground would actually have. And uh, that's basically it. You have this really nice uh, uh, spark, welding spark here, and it kind of produces here and slowly falls, render faster, render faster. Um, and then it will soon just hit the ground. You'll see it kind of reflect. There it is. And you'll see it kind of grow. And you'll see it's basically like mirroring what you have here. Very realistic. And I really admire the uh, video co-pilot and their uh, creativity with this. Because, I mean, honestly, they're geniuses with After Effects. They're the gods of After Effects. Um, just very smart. Uh, very cool effect. like what they did. So thank you for uh, helping with helping me with this part. But uh, if you want really to see their whole thing with uh, reflecting off the surface, go check that video out. Go to Video Copilot's uh, channel and just look at the uh, lightning uh, video. I think it's the most recent so far, currently. Um, now, as you can see, I have a little flare layer. And that's technically not needed, but adds a little bit of realism. Where is it? Da, da, da. Oh, there it is. Has a little more realism, like there's an actual spark, and when you're near the camera, there would be a little lens flare going into the camera itself. So, not quite needed, but still is cool. Oops. So, that's basically it. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, I hope you guys like, comment, subscribe. Hope you guys watch other videos. Um, if you would like me to actually start from very scratch and just go through it again with you, uh, put down in the comments below. Tell me what you think. Tell me if there's anything I should tweak. Give me some criticism. I need it. Criticism is always good. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching, and I guess I will see you guys on the next video. Ciao.